All right, in the January paper, question seven was stats. First thing they asked us to do is find um, the range, and they gave us some marks here up to in my what, 10 students. Top mark is 60. Well, top mark possible to get a 60, it's out of 60, and we have 10 marks here. So the range is one of the easiest things they can ask in statistics. The range is simply the highest value. Take away the, the lowest value. So look at the data, find the highest thing, find the lowest thing, take it away, move on with your life. Median. Median comes back to primary school where we are asked to find the middle. So what's the first thing that you do? Now plenty of people mix up median and mean. You don't want to mix up median with mean. Eh? Mean is average, median, think middle. So we first thing you do is arrange it in numerical order. Then you cross out, just like what they teach you in primary school. Cross out, pairs, pairs, pairs. In this case, we end up with two in the middle when something like that occurs. You know you need to add the two together and divide by two. Bam, you get the answer. Median. Median is 37.5 in this question, right? So one mark, one mark for each part. Um, Next up, they ask us about what interquartile range. Part three is the interquartile range. We didn't see this in a while, interquartile range, so that was nice to see it there. I hope that's nice for people who did the exam as well. To find the interquartile range, um, quickest thing to do, split the values into two, upper half, lower half, and find the median of the lower half and the median of the upper half. There's a formula, but for two marks, this is the quickest thing you should do. Cross out, you see I crossed out here, I got 31 as the lower quartile. I got 38 as the upper quartile, so that's Q1, Q3, that's the term we use for it. And the interquartile range is going to be Q3, take away Q1, which is the upper quartile, take away the lower quartile, and that's the range. 38, take away 31, 7. So there's 7 marks for this, right? So this is the quickest way possible to find the interquartile range here in this. You can use the formula as well, but I feel that's like an overkill for that question. In addition, part four, we were asked to find the probability that the student chosen at random scores less than half. So if you remember, the, map, the total was 60, so less than half is 30. In this question, I, I wonder if you remember the data. Only two students got less than half. <coughs> Only two. So what does that mean? That means half mark is 30, and two students get less score below 30, so the probability is 2 out of 10 out of the total number of marks. So it's the occurrence, you want to what the total possible occurrence is, 0.2 or 20%. You can express probability in a, a, a three different ways, right? So, our next two marks there, next two marks there. Finally, let's go to the last part of the question. And they asked us about frequency polygon and a lot of people were preparing for well at least some of my students were telling you they're preparing for histogram and stuff like that right the frequency polygon is simple you need the midpoint and in the question we were given the midpoint and the frequencies and it's basically these two points we are using to plot the coordinates here's a scale the scale was given to us as well so it was simple and this question was six marks this is half of the whole of number seven in terms of marks the diagram should come out looking like this. Let's just check the first point, 62, 62, 8, 8. Right, so you see that point is a little off, but you're doing the exam, right? Not me, right? Right, so all the other points are on point. Why you need to remember all the frequency polygon, don't try to draw no fancy curve and thing here. It's a polygon. It seems to be straight lines between points. This um, axis, axis was um, disjointed, it was broken because it started at 60. Since they gave us a scale, we need to start at 60 here. Otherwise, it would not work to try and start from zero, right? Um, so, uh, don't forget to label the axes. Don't forget to hit them all in title too. Compare, you can compare the boat here. Pause the video and compare the boat here. And that's it for question seven.